What's up guys and welcome back to Soft and Audit Solutions and today we're talking about Dying Light 2. Yes ladies and gentlemen, Dying Light 2 is here and today I'm doing an optimization guide and an FPS boost guide for people out there that really needs an FPS boost. So all you need to do is follow my guidelines and you should be good to go. Alright, so the first thing we're going to go over is the window settings. You're going to go to the search button over here and type in settings just like this and press enter. Go to update and security and make sure your windows is up to date on a regular basis. I highly recommend that you keep your windows up to date on a regular basis because windows needs to be up to date for newer games to play well. So go and do this. Next thing you're going to need to do is go to the home button over here and you're going to go to privacy. You're going to scroll all the way down to where it says background apps. If yours is on like this and everything is on inside here, I can actually turn something off like this. I can turn it off. Turn all of these things off individually if you want to, or you could just click this button over here and it will turn everything off. What this does is it runs in the background and it uses resources of your RAM and your CPU. So while you are playing the game, all of these things are going to run in the background and you don't want that. You're going to click on the home button up here and you're going to go to personalize. You're going to go to color. Now a lot of people run their windows on light mode like this, especially for laptop users. This is very important. Change this from light to dark mode. What it's going to do is it's going to use less resources of your CPU and your RAM all together in one and turn the transparency effect off. Turn it off and choose a dark color inside here, but it's your own personal preference in what color you want. I keep mine as Storm over here. You're going to go to the home button over here and you're going to go to gaming. You're going to go to gaming mode. Now a lot of people have different preferences about this option over here. So if you put this on and your game runs much smoother, keep it on. If you put it off and your game runs much smoother, keep it off. All right, so the next step you're going to need to do is go to the search button over here and you're going to type in edit power plan, just like this, and go to power plan. All right, you're going to go to power options and you're going to see these over here. All right, so I basically reinstalled my whole Windows drive because my Windows actually crashed yesterday with my C drive. So this is actually a really important step for people out there if you have not changed anything inside you before. So this is basically a brand new Windows. So follow my guidelines and I'm going to show you how to get the best performance out of your machine with the power options in general. All right, so the first thing you're going to need to do is we're going to create a power plan for Dying Light 2. So you're going to go to create a plan you're going to go to high performance and delete everything inside here and just type here best settings for dying light 2. You can type anything you like inside there, whatever the case might be. Just go next. And then this one up here, you're going to say never and never and say create. Now we have a power option created for dying light 2. Now this just won't be for Dying Light 2, it will be for every single game you're going to be playing on your machine. You're going to go to Change Plan Settings and go to Change Advanced Power Settings. Now as you can see here, when a PC is just installed and you haven't changed anything on your machine, your hard drive turns off after 20 minutes. It goes to sleep. It could be an SSD, it could be a hard drive, whatever the case might be. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to do this, alright? So as you can see this one is active at the moment. You go to Hard Disk. You go here, go in this block, and type in zero. You're going to click on anything, and it's going to say never. This is especially useful for people out there with mechanical drives. If you're running this game on a mechanical drive, it's very useful. I run this game on an SSD, and I still put this on never. So what it's going to do is it's going to say turn off hard disk after never, and you're going to keep this like this. Scroll all the way down, go to processor power management, minimum processor state, and put this on 100%, just like this. If you're running this game on a laptop, it's going to say plugged in or on battery. I highly recommend changing them both to 100%. Maximum processor state, make sure this is on 100% as well. Once you're done with this, you're going to say apply and you're going to say OK and you can close out of this. Now you have the best power options for your Windows system itself. The next step you're going to need to do is go to the search button over here and type in graphics settings just like this and click on the graphics settings tab. You're going to go to the browse button over here but first of all i'm going to show you guys this now i just installed windows it's a brand brand new install so i do not have this enabled so if you enable this it's going to say restart your pc to apply your changes i highly recommend go and switch this on if you have this option and it gives you this restart your machine after watching this video you're going to click on the browse button over here and you're going to go to where your game is installed so steam installation and then go to steam apps go to common 
and then find where your dying light 2 is. So here's dying light 2. You're going to click on this button over here where it says pH. You're going to go to work and you're going to go to bin and then time 64 and double click on the game itself. So this is the exe file for the game. You're going to click on options, put it on high performance because when you have a brand new Windows installed, it's going to say let Windows decide. I highly recommend going and change this to high performance and let it use your graphics card. You're going to say save and you're going to close out of this. All right, so the next thing you're going to need to do is go to the search button over here and type in device manager, just like this. Click on device manager and go to display adapters. Right click on your graphics card and say update driver. Say search automatically for drivers and this will let you know if you have the latest drivers installed on your machine. Now this is the quick and easy way of letting you know if you have the latest drivers. There's another way of doing this. It's a longer way of doing it basically. Go to any search engine and then go and type in the graphics card that you're currently running. So I'm just going to do this. 2060 driver download. So you're going to click on this over here. So obviously you're going to type in your graphics card, then driver download. It doesn't matter if you're AMD or NVIDIA and go to the official website where your thing is. So there it's already picking up my graphics card and you go just go search and you go and download this. I highly recommend installing GeForce Experience. If this is the first time you are downloading the latest drivers from a website, go in and install GeForce Experience. GeForce Experience will let you know in the corner over here that you have a new driver installation that needs to be installed and there's a new driver that's been released all right so the next step you're going to need to do is right click on your desktop and go to nvidia control panel if you are a nvidia user like me and the first thing you're going to need to do is go over here where it says adjust image settings with preview and you're going to choose this one over here where it says use the advanced 3d image settings and click apply once you're done with that, you're going to go to this option over here and select the graphics card. Automatically, it will be set to this. You do not want it like that because it's going to jump around from your GPU to your CPU usage and you don't want that. You want to select your graphics card and then say apply and it's going to apply the changes that it's going to be using your graphics card. The next thing you're going to need to do for color in the game to make the game look much, much better is all you need to do is go to this one over here where it says adjust desktop color settings. Now, what you're going to need to do here is you're going to change the digital vibrance. So this plays a big role on different monitors, on different screens. If you have a laptop display or a gaming monitor or a normal monitor, it doesn't matter. Just go to this image over here, which is number three, and look at the picture while you are changing this. My personal sweet spot is 85 like this for my main display. I have three displays as you can see. So this is where I play my games on, on my main display. I keep it on 85 and the games look much, much better. Trust me, Dying Light is going to look really, really good if you change the digital vibrance. All you need to do is say apply. Once you're done with that, you're going to close out of this. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump straight into the game. I'm going to show you the best settings that you could be using inside the game to get better FPS in this game. All right, let's jump straight into that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, sorry about my voice this morning. I don't know what's going on with my voice, <coughs> but yeah, sorry about that. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go to those options over here and go to video. The first thing you're going to see is this one over here. So I highly recommend changing this to full screen and play your game at full screen mode. If you do get better FPS in window borderless, go ahead and do so, or you can play it in window mode, depending on your machine. I keep mine at full screen. I do highly recommend playing it at full screen and keeping it at full screen mode. This is your native monitor and this is your native resolution. Virtual synchronization, obviously VSync, you're going to turn this off unless you want to cap your FPS at 60 FPS, depending on the monitor that you are running, where it's going to cap your FPS. This one over here, you're just going to leave this as is, and then Gamma, you're going to leave at 20. Do not change this since we already changed it in the video control panel. Film gain effect, you're going to turn this off. Do not turn it on. Colorblind mode, own personal preference, I don't need this. So the next step you're going to need to do is press F on your keyboard and it's going to take you to your quality of your graphics. So render mode, I highly recommend playing it in DirectX 11. If you want to get more FPS out of your game, do not push this up to DirectX 12. You are going to lose FPS inside the game. Keep it at 11. This one over here, keep it off. 
game screen size, keep it at 100%, sharpen, leave it at its default settings. And then this one over here plays a very big role with FPS and a very big role with personal settings as well. So the default settings is zero. I'm going to keep mine on the highest that it can go to because I like playing my games in field of view that the highest it can go to. It makes the game look much better because your field of view is much better and you can see much better in your game on your left and right hand side. All right, this one over here, you're going to either change down to low or you can keep it on high depending on the graphics card you have. Motion blur quality, you don't really need this in this game to be honest with you. So you can put this on none if you want to gain FPS inside this game. Particle quality, what you're going to change inside here is you're going to change it from high to low. Or you can keep it on high at your own personal preference depending on the graphics card that you're running. Sun shadow quality, you're going to leave this at default settings, which is PCF. Leave it like that. It's going to make your game run smooth. Don't worry about that. This one over here, contact shadow quality. I highly recommend you change this from very high to either high or medium. Do not put it on very high. You're going to lose FPS inside your game. Trust me, you're going to lose FPS, especially if you want an FPS boost in your game. Go and change this to medium. Ambient occlusion quality, change this from high to low. But if your game runs perfectly fine on high, then go ahead and keep it on high. This one over here, you're going to keep it on high or you're going to change it to medium to get better FPS out of your game. And then this one over here, this is reflections quality. This plays a big role on the game itself because of all the reflections inside the game. I highly recommend you change this to medium and keep it there if you are losing FPS inside this game. Ray traced flashlight. I highly recommend keeping this off. Do not change this. Keep it off. Fog quality, you can actually put this on medium and you should be good to go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, all you're going to need to do is apply these settings and you should be good to go with an FPS boost and your game will run much, much smoother. If this worked for you, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new year. And ladies and gentlemen, sorry about my voice. I don't know what's going on with my voice this morning. I mean, this whole video might have sounded weird with my voice. I don't know what's going on. But in anyways, ladies and gentlemen, as always, peace out.